Hey guys, what's up? You'll be moving news. We're taking a look at the news releases from the theaters, streaming services, and home media on local boxes also weekend. We're starting with all the new releases. Yes, I'm late, but I was very busy yesterday, and hey, better late than never. Alright, the first new release we're going to take a look at is coming out on Friday, November 4th, and it is Doctor Strange, which is the newest installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's directed by Scott Derrickson, stars Benedict Cumberbatch, Tilda Swinton, Rachel McAdams, Chio Tello Gio Four, Mads Nicholson, Michael Stolbar, I pronounce any means words wrong with me, combo card pronunciation, Benedict Wong, Benjamin Bratt, 91%, 104 reviews, Doctor Strange artfully balances its outtrace sort of tale against the blockbuster constraints of the MCU, delivering a thoroughly entertaining superhero origin story in the bargain. It goes without saying I'm excited for this. This 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 movie feels like it's aiming to be the most visually inventive Marvel film to date. I absolutely love this teaser trailer. It looked like it looks like it was be, becoming like Marvel's version of Inception, except trading out the science for magic. Cool. Um, it has a very talented cast on board, and it's cool that Marvel is once again ha bringing a lot of new talent on board. I just think it's kind of nice. Um, it just—I mean, this movie just looks really cool, especially from a visual standpoint. I am definitely very excited for this, and I really hope it's a fun time. Next one is Trolls, which is the newest film from DreamWorks. It's uh, size of the voice talents of Anna Kendrick, Justin Timberlake, Gwen Stefani, Zoe Deschanel, James Corden, Christopher Mintz Bloss, Russell Brand, Christine Baromsky, Kunal Nair. 70% 50 reviews. Trolls brings its instantly recognizable character to the big screen in a color Avenger that, while geared toward the younger set, isn't without rewards for parents, and it's also coming out on November on Friday, November 4th. The teaser trailer was kind of embarrassing when you think about it. Seriously, it was the characters dancing to Silent Hill. If that's if you're trying to appeal to kids, that is the worst way you could be doing that. First off, that that inspired an internet trend that died out after like a year. Oof, that lasted way too long. I'm not a big fan of internet trends. Not a big fan of memes. Not like that. Those those date very very quickly for me. They date very quickly in general. So yeah, that was not really a smart move when it comes to your marketing. I haven't seen any other trailers, but I don't know. I mean, the reviews are super pretty decent, and DreamWorks has done good, even great things. The first two Shrek movies, the High Training Dragon movies, and the Coming Panda trilogy. They've done great things. Do they have some misses? Yes. A lot of people don't... Yeah, Shark Tale was poorly received, and a lot of people don't have the best things to say about, uh, Home. I didn't... I mean, I haven't seen Shark Tale in years, and I never saw Home, so I can't really give my opinions on those. Maybe someday, but not now. But this one seems to have... There's actually, I'm looking at a photo right here, and it looks pretty good. The character designs look pretty good, and uh, the detail on them is really good. And hey, the reviews are decent. I'll probably check it out at some point, but it's not high on my list. Next one is Hacksaw Ridge. This is a World War II biopic directed by Mel Gibson. Uh, stars Andrew Garfield, Teresa Palmer, Hugo Weaving, Luke Bracey, Sam Worthington, Vince Vaughn, Rachel Griffiths, um, Matt Nabel. Has a 91%, 35 reviews. Hacksaw Ridge uses a real-life pacifist's legacy to lay the groundwork for a gripping wartime tribute to faith, valor, and the courage of remaining true to one's convictions. This movie definitely really has my attention. I mean, it's actually this is based on the true story of uh, Desmond T. Doss, who uh, who was a uh, who served in the in World War II, and he saved 75 men in the Battle of Okinawa without carrying a weapon or even firing a weapon at all. There, there's, there's a lot of potential for a really powerful story to be told here, and I have seen one film from Mel Gibson that he directed, uh, Breitbart, and I actually own it. And yes, I, it also came, yeah, I bought a double feature, this was like, like, like five bucks. Came Gladiator, and it goes without saying that I love Gladiator too. And you know, I think Breitbart's a great film, um, he was pretty good at acting in it, but also came to directing. He was, he did a fantastic job with the action sequences. He really did a great job showcasing the brutality of war. And, uh... I just hope I just really hope that he successfully pulls it off here. Once again, a very talented cast, and you know, there's a lot of potential for a very powerful story here, and I really, really hope it delivers. Next one is Loving. This is written and directed by Jeff Nichols. It stars uh, Joel Edgerton, Ruth Nega, N-E-G-G-A. She plays a uh, tulip on Preacher. I only seen a few episodes of that, but I do like her. <laughs> She's one of my favorite characters. Though I can't decide between her and Cassidy. It's pretty tough. I need to watch more episodes. Michael Shannon, Nick Crawl, uh, 94%, 51 reviews. Loving takes an understated approach to telling a painful and still relevant real life tale with sensitive performances breathing additional life into a superlative historical drama. This focuses around Richard and Mildred Loving, you know, like, uh, 
you know, like, involved in, like, the civil rights case, Lynn versus Virginia, the Supreme Court case that took place, that, you know, the proceedings took place in 1967. It focuses around that. And, uh, I think this, I think this movie, I think when this premiered at Cannes, it got, it received, it had a great response from the, from the crowd at Cannes, I think. And, uh, it was huge. And also, like, uh, also at the Venice International Film Festival, I believe, like, Hacks of Red got, like, a 10-minute standing ovation, I believe. Uh, back to loving. Uh, this has a lot of potential, but just like Hacks of Red, this has a lot of potential to be something that could be very emotionally powerful, very, like, something very emotionally powerful. And, uh, I have seen one Jeff Nichols film, it's actually one that, that, uh, came out this year that he also run directed, Midnight Special, and I like that film. Still haven't seen Shotgun Stories, Take Shelter, or Mud, but I would like to. <clears throat> and also, he's collaborating with uh, Michael Shannon again. Interesting. It's also a second collaboration to Ledgerton, the first being uh, Midnight Special. I just thought that was cool. Uh, there's a lot of potential for there. For there. And also, like, a Hacksaw Rage and Loving come out also on Friday, November 4th. Um, it has great reviews so far, and I'm definitely willing to check it out, because I feel like it has a lot of potential to be something, like a very, like a very powerful drama. Really hope it delivers. Next one's The Eagle Huntress. This is a documentary. It comes out um, on what, tomorrow, Wednesday, November 2nd. And uh, one of the name, and actually, like, it's narrated by uh, Daisy Ridley. It has 95% 20 reviews. I don't really know anything about it, but considering it has good reviews, I'm definitely willing to check it out at some point. Next one is Dog Eat Dog. This uh, is directed by, written and directed by Paul Schrader. Um, stars uh, Willem Dafoe and Nicolas Cage. Has a 44% 16 reviews. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, I know, like, Paul Schrader has written good stuff. You know, he co-wrote uh, Raging Bull, which I still haven't seen yet. And he also wrote uh, Taxi Driver, which I absolutely love. And those are both directed by Martin Scorsese, actually. Um, it just hurts that, unfortunately, that this that this is a poorly received, that this is not getting very good reception. And it's sad to Nicolas Cage being part of a poor receipt project because honestly, he's a very talented actor. He can do great. He can do. He can be a very good actor. I haven't seen Joe yet, but I would like to. But he was great in Leaving Las Vegas and Adaptation. He's a very talented actor. He can. He definitely can prove himself when given the right when given the right material. I guess this isn't the case. I would like to see him being. I just you know I like to see him being much better stuff. Hopefully that will happen. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Let's just hope so. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna be skipping this. Also, it comes out. It comes out on Friday, November fourth. Also, coming out on Friday, November fourth, is Trash Fire. This stars uh, Adrian Greenier, uh, Angela Trimber, Matthew Gray, Gubler, Ray Santiago. Say one percent, ten reviews. And I think it's supposed to be like a horror film. Okay, so far reviews are pretty decent. And no one has actually been a great year for horror films. It'd be nice to get another good horror film. Uh, let's hope oh, that turns out to be the case. Okay, this one, this one already came. This one came out like on on ha yesterday on Halloween, like on Monday, October thirty first. Obviously, it's called Gehenna, where death lives. One of the stars in it is Doug Jones. I don't really know anything about this, but uh, hopefully, it hopefully p p people who saw it liked it. Next one is Peter and the Farm. This is a documentary. It has a hundred percent six reviews. I don't really know anything about it, but I would like to check it out. It comes out on Friday, November 4th. And the last one, also coming out Friday, November 4th, is uh, Army of One. This stars Nicolas Cage, Russell Brand, Rain Wilson, Paul Shear, Wendy McLendon Covey. I think it says to be directed by Larry Charles. So far, there's nothing on it, but uh, uh, hopefully it's good. Two Nicolas Cage movies in one week. Interesting. Let's just hope it's good. I don't really know much about it, but let's hope it delivers. Alright, so let's go to the uh, homey releases. These came out today, uh, November 1st, Tuesday. First one is Star Trek Beyond, the third installment in the re Star Trek reboot series. Directed by Justin Lin, written by Simon Pegg and Doug Jung. Uh, it stars Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Anton Yelchin, John Cho, Cho Simon Pegg, Carl Urban, Zoe Saldana, Idris Elba, Ashley Edner, also Sophia Butella. 
84 percent, 244 reviews. Star Trek Beyond continues to franchise its post reboot hot streak with an epic sci fi venture that honors the sci series sci fi roots without skipping on the blockbuster action. I saw this and I'm still trying to put my thoughts together on it because I don't know if I like it or if I really like it. <laughs> well, at least I still, I mean, either way, it's still a positive review. So uh, that's something, I guess. I've only seen Into Darkness, but I haven't seen it since it came out in theaters three years ago. Yeah. Um, I thought this was a lot. I thought this movie was a lot. Was pretty fun, and the cast was pretty good. You know, it was a fun time. With the, it was a you know, it was a fun time. There's not much I can say about that. It was it was fun. Had some fun. Team had a fun, had the team dynamic was well done. It had some good, very good special effects. Fun action. And I like the interactions between the team members. They had some good chemistry. It was a lot of fun. I, uh, yeah. And I get, I, and some people are saying it's the best of the reboot series. Okay. Maybe it's because it feels the most like Star Trek compared to the other t previous two, but I don't know. I haven't seen them, so I can't. And I, don't, I don't remember Into Darkness, and I haven't seen Star Trek, so I can't really say anything about that. And I haven't seen the original series, Next Generation, or any of the original movies, so, like I said, I can't, I can't really uh, back up that. But uh, I'm glad that some people were enjoying this, and uh, and I hope very well for the future Star Trek films. Rest in peace, Anton Yelich and Leonard Nimoy. Anton, you left us way too soon. Let's continue. Next one is a Bad Moms. This is written and directed by John Lucas and Scott Moore. It's a comedy. It stars Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, Katherine Hahn, Christina Applegate, MJ Anthony, Jay Pickett Smith, Jay Hernandez, Anima Molo, Una Lawrence, David Walton. 60% of her 31 reviews. Bad Moms posts a terrific cast and welcome twist on domestic comedy, and there are often enough to compensate for the movie's unfortunate inability to take full advantage of its assets. I saw it and I enjoyed it. Uh, nothing really special to me. It was fine. I got some good laughs out of it, but it, and I get what it's trying to do, but it does feel a bit safe. It feels more like, more or less like the same kind of comedy we've been seeing over and over again. You know, like kind of the same gags, like uh, you're doing, uh, you know, like for example, like you're doing gags, like you know, like stuff people being ridiculous, people doing ridiculous crap in slow motion, easy way to get a laugh and all that crap, and it was just silly. And and supposedly it's message trying to get across. It comes across pretty preachy, but I don't know. I had a fun time with it, and also like some comedies, some jokes go on way too long, and after a while, some that are trying to be crude just become more gross instead of funny, even if they don't really show anything anymore. Let's just explicit, just kind of talk about detail. Doesn't really make it. Doesn't really make a difference. Like you could still gross out your audience by just saying it. I don't know. I enjoyed. I enjoyed the cast. I got to get my laughs out of it, but it's nothing really special. It's fine. Not really a comedy I go. I'd watch over and over again, but I don't know, it's probably it's probably like you know, a fun divert. It's probably a fun distraction, I guess. Next one is the Sea of Trees. This is directed by Gus Van Sant. That stars Matthew McConaughey, Naomi Watts, Ken Watanabe. Ten percent. 40 reviews, dull, maudlin, and fundamentally empty. The Sea of Trees extinguishes the contributions of a talented cast and marks a depressing low point director Gus Van Zandt's career. I think I've only I don't know, I think I've only seen one Gus Van Zandt film, and that was uh, Google Hunting, which I love and I also own that. I would like to see more of his stuff. Oh well, at some point. Um I don't know, there's not much I can I mean yeah, I heard that when this was screened, I think like at the Cancel Festival, people were laughing when it was when they when it was playing. And yeah, it's hated. It's sad knowing that, you know, these are some very talented people involved, both behind and front of the camera. But what can you do? There's going they're gonna once again, there's always gonna be like a dud every once in a while and what can, there's nothing you can do about it. Sad. Hopefully, uh, these people will make better decisions next time, and I'd like to see Gus Van Sant make a, make a good film again. All right, let's go to the box results for the weekend. Uh, number one is Boom, A Dia Halloween, seventeen million two hundred twenty thousand three hundred twelve dollars. I'm actually getting a little surprised that someone got a ton of money, considering the fact this is one that this is getting bad reviews. But I guess Tyler Perry really has a big audience. 
All right. I mean, it's already, it's almost, it's almost tripled its budget, for God's sake. I don't think I'm seeing it because it just looks dumb. I'd rather rent it from Gamefly because I'm not going to be paying for it. Sorry, that's how I feel. Um, there's not, I mean, I just don't want to see it and I just don't care about it. Number two, Inferno. $14,860,425. Hmm. Not that much of a hit. Maybe because we wait. Maybe because it, it was such. Maybe because it was such a. It was such a long span. A long span of time between Angels and Demons and this. And if you wonder how long that was, that was seven years. And the fact that this is the worst reviewed of all of them, of all the ones in our Lane trilogy so far. Yeah. Although I don't think it really matters because it's such a big hit internationally. Can't have that doubt. <laughs> I guess I. I don't know. I mean. I don't really have much of, I don't really care, I don't really have much interest in seeing this. I didn't see Da Vinci Code or Angels and Demons, but maybe, out of curiosity, but probably, once again, it's a rental from Gamefly. Because I don't like paying for poorly received stuff. That's how I roll. Honestly, I think that saves me a lot of money. Whatever. Three, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Uh, $9,640,747. Yeah, it's already made its budget back, but that's worldwide. Not domestically yet. Or even in foreign territories. Kinda of sad when you think about it. Eh, what can you do? I might check out Curiosity, but unfortunately it's not on really high on my list. If really on my list at all. I don't really like seeing poorly received stuff in theaters. I'll make a few exceptions. Mostly if they're big releases like Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. But yeah, I wasn't exactly fond of those. I even did it. I even did it for Allegiant, and I wanted my money back. I, didn't, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but I was really pissed that I paid five bucks for it when it wasn't even worth that money. I should have rented it from GameFly. Well, at least I'll learn next time. Or if you know they don't release in theaters, or at least on made for TV movie, they haven't really finalized the plans yet. I don't really know what's going on now. <sighs> Whatever. I don't, I don't care about the franchise anymore. I never cared for it to begin with. Moving on, number four, the accountant, eight million four eighty one thousand fifty two dollars. Yay! It's a, uh, it's, it's a success. I enjoyed it. Uh, it I, I guess I guess it's the most disappointing film of October, considering the fact that oh, it could have been so much greater, but unfortunately, it didn't deliver on that, which really sucks. It really does. But uh, what can you do? There's not much you can do. There really, really isn't. Whatever. At least it wasn't awful. It could have been much, much worse. But if we do Origin of Evil, seven million hundred ten thousand one hundred five dollars I wish more people were seeing this, because I saw it and I actually liked it. I didn't see Ouija. I might just check it out Curiosity. I can rent it from Gamefly for God's sake, so I'm not paying for it. I don't think it's playing on demand, so... Yeah, I'm probably have to wait several weeks, if not a couple months, to get it from Gamefly. <sighs> I think really need to start catching up. But yeah, um, I guess, you know, I mean, it's already made over $45 million, so hopefully it'll outgross its predecessor. I don't know if that will be the case. I mean, what is this, like the, uh, oh, the second week. Maybe a slight possibility of that, but it's not really a huge possibility. So far, the so far, it's made over twenty-five million nine hundred nine thousand and fifteen dollars in domestically, and nineteen million five hundred twenty-one thousand one dollar foreign. So there's some possibility of that, but this is just the second week, so we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, it does because honestly, this is much more deserving, much more deserving of money than the first one from what I've heard. I still need to see it, even though I don't want to because it's so hated. Six. The girl on the train. Four million three hundred eighty-seven thousand fifteen dollars. I still haven't seen this, and it's not really high on my list. I might check it out, but yeah, it's not high on my list. Seven, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, $4,073,674. Um, okay, um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it hasn't made its budget back in the U.S., but it's made, but it's made, if it's, it's almost, oh, it's doubled its budget, well, it's more than doubled its budget worldwide, okay. I might check it out of curiosity, but once again, not high on my list. 
King of the Joneses, number eight, three million three hundred nine thousand one hundred seven dollars. Does anyone care for this? Not even making that much money, and it's also one of the most well, it's also very poorly reviewed. So yeah, no one really cares for it. Is any, are any of you surprised by that? As for they should start, li I swear, like they need to start listening to us. And really, critical views sometimes really can affect how a movie turns out. For example. If that was serious, if you know, if Rotten Tomatoes didn't exist when Fan Force came along, I probably would have made more money on its opening weekend. Probably, probably would have made much more money on its opening weekend. I could be wrong about that, but word, but word travels fast through the internet. So, uh, I don't know. I would like them to start making better stuff. We deserve better than this. We we shouldn't be resorting to crap like this. Yes, I haven't seen it, but knowing it's very poorly reviewed, I doubt gonna like it. Nine storks. Same as last week. Two million eight hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred forty dollars. It still hasn't made its budget back domestically, but it's more than doubled its budget uh, worldwide. So I guess that doesn't. So I guess it's not a problem. Still haven't seen this, but I might check it out of curiosity more than anything else. Ten. I did high muskel. Two million one hundred ninety thousand forty-two dollars. Not about opening, I guess, for considering if I don't want 302 theaters. Um, don't really have anything to say about it, but, uh, okay, not a bad opening. 11. Deep Art Horizon, $2,094,121. Ugh, man, I wish this was making more money. Still hasn't made back its $110 million budget yet, worldwide. It's almost there, but not yet. <sighs> Hopefully. Because I actually really liked it. Twelve. Kevin Hart. What now? One million seven thirteen thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a six. Yeah, it's made its budget back. Um, that's all I can really say about it. Um, cool, I guess. Yeah, I don't have much to go on. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. That is, anyways, guys. That's a uh, movie news for this week. Comment below. What do you think of the new releases? Are you going to see any of them? Skipping them? Wait for rental? Skip them entirely? What do you think of the new home video releases? Are you going to buy any of them? Rent any of them? Or just skip them entirely? And what do you think of the new home... What do you think of the box office results? Do you have any predictions? If so, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Until the next video, see ya.